One of the fundamental routines of Fusion 2.5 is fast loops. Um, I've done quite a few written tutorials on fast loops. Um, I've done a, a few video tutorials as well, which are available over at the website fusionrad.com. But I feel like it's necessary that everybody should know what a fast loop is, how it works in Fusion 2.5, and how you can use them to your advantage. Now there are absolutely thousands of different scenarios in which you can uh, use fast loops to your advantage. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just briefly talk about um, uh, typical usage scenarios for fast loops uh, and just give you a quick example as well. Um, and from there, hopefully you'll be able to improvise and learn a little bit more about fast loops um, off your own back uh, once you know the fundamentals and the basics of how a fast loop works. So first of all, what is a fast loop? Well, Fusion 2.5 uh, runs off your event sheet which is here which is made up of all your events throughout the game typically fusion 2.5 if it's running at 60 frames a second will iterate through this event list 60 times per second uh, to, to ensure that all the events are executed in order from top to bottom um, now with a fast loop what a fast loop does is when you call a fast loop it will halt where it is in that uh, event list to then uh, execute the fast loop that you've told it to and it will run that fast loop and it will not resume the event list until that fast loop has completed so if you imagine this is running through at 60 frames a second let's uh there's no, there's no point doing an example for that let's just drop in an active object so we can uh, we can use this anyway so if you imagine your game is running at 60 frames a second 60 times per second fusion is running through your event list to see which events are being triggered and what it should do for the actions um and then all of a sudden out of the blue you call a fast loop it's going to stop processing uh, the event list and it's going to process the fast loop and it won't resume where it left off until the fast loop is finished so let's give it a try how would we normally do a fast loop well you can call a fast loop at any time um, let's do um, I press the up arrow on my keyboard so I want to run a fast loop so I would start a loop and I would call the loop up. It would ask me how many times I want to run the loop. I'm going to say once for this example. Okay, so what happens when that loop is executed? Well, we need to create a condition uh, a condition for an event that says um, on loop, and then we type in the name of the loop, which is up in this instance. So what do we want to happen on this fast loop? Um, well, we want to uh, move our object here so we will change its y coordinate to its current y coordinate minus two pixels so if i run the application now and press the up arrow you'll see that i can move it every time i press the up arrow the fast loops running and i am moving the object up two pixels now i can repeat this for um, down so on down on loop down we would then move the object plus two pixels which is down so I can move up and I can't move down because I didn't specify the fast loop when the arrow key is pressed so we'll try that again one there we go so now I should be able to move it up and down it's moving every fast loop it's moving two pixels now, we can get it to move um, a much larger rate without actually changing the coordinates on here because all we do is set the fast loop to run more times. So if we set it to run 10 times, when I press up now, you'll see it jumps up 10 pixels and that's because, uh, 20 pixels, sorry, and that's because I'm executing the loop 10 times and upon every single loop, it's taking two off the y coordinate so 10 times 2 is 20 and you can see how fast this happens look how fast that happens that's how fast the fast loop is running so it's almost immediate um, I say almost it pretty much is uh, an immediate event uh, uh, you know it will stop everything in its tracks until it's executed this um, and then it will um, let me see if I can browse up a bit of example let me delete these events um, let's throw in a list object 
doesn't matter where it goes, let's pop it there. And a button object. Right. So let's in this example let's just say we want the user to press the button. It's going to generate a series of random numbers in here. So we can easily do that. So what we do is we detect the button has been clicked and that's when we do the action which is start the fast loop and we're going to call it numbers. Now enter the number of loops. Now this can be dynamic. It doesn't have to be a static number. So we can run the loop 10 times. We can run the loop 20 times. It can be a static number or we can generate a random number. So we can say 10 plus random 21 which will give us a number between 1 and 30. So then we do our next condition which is on loop and the loop is called numbers. So every time that loop is called, so say for example when we press the button, it's going to start the loop 10 plus random 21 times, so a number between 10 and 30. So say for example it runs the loop 30 times, uh, it's going to execute this event 30 times. So what we do is we do add a line and it's asking us what text we want in the line. So we're going to generate a random number every time. So I'm going to do the string command to convert this number into a string for the text box so we're going to do random let's give it a large number 293,847 and we close that off with a bracket so you can see here every time this loop executes uh, which will be 30 times for example um, every time it will do this action it will generate a random number between 0 293,847 uh, and it will convert it to a string and it will add it to a line which goes in the list so if I press F8 now and we click do numbers, watch how fast this happens. There you go. It's just generated, I have no idea how many is there, probably about 20, within the blink of an eye. You didn't even see it was that fast. And I can keep adding on to this list as many times as I want. And every time it's generating a series of numbers. Now, what you can do for this example is we can set up a text string and we can um, track how many times uh, the loop is running every time so what we can do is um, let me think what can we do the best way to do this would be the cleanest way would be to pop it in a group called do numbers And then what I tend to do is execute the fast loop at the top of the group. So now when the user presses um, the button, what we do is we activate the do numbers group. Because this is deactivated at start. So the user clicks the button and it activates the do numbers group. The very first uh, event that's called in this group is to start the loop. And then obviously the rest of the... Um, loops are calculated in and once they're finished like that we can then deactivate do numbers okay so this is a bit more of a cleaner way of doing it because now we can do things and keep track like for example um, we can create a global value called loop count and at the start of the loop or just before the loop starts, uh, we can set the loop count to zero. And then we execute the loop, and then when the loop is executed, we'll just add one to the count. So we just do add one to that. And then at the end of the loop, we can set the string to display the value. Now, because it's a string, we have to do the string conversion again, like that. So I click OK, and I also want to reset the list as well. Um, so we can do this uh, when the user clicks the button. So every time the user clicks the button now, it's going to set the loop count to zero. It's going to reset the list, and then it's going to generate, um, it's going to start a fast loop a random amount of times. It's going to execute the fast loop that random amount of times. It's going to add one to the loop count, and at, when it's finished, it's going to uh, display the loop count in a string and then it's going to close the group so we can run over again. So run application, 
So we've got 26 random numbers generated in our list there. You can see 26 there. That's the loop count that's represented up here, the global value. So we'll do it again. We've got 27 numbers that time. And again, we've got 12 numbers that time. And all random, you can see how fast this is happening. It's like lightning. I'll show you how fast the fusion runtime is. If we do um, something bigger, let's do at least 100 and let's do 221. So it's now going to generate, it, when it runs the fast loop now, it's going to execute it at least 100 times and the maximum amount of times it's going to do it is uh, 320. Watch how fast this happens. It's generated 159 random numbers in the blink of an eye there. And we can just carry on doing this all day. 195 random numbers generated. So you can see just how effective a fast loop can be, whether it comes to movement or whether it comes to generating numbers. Um, you can see how fast they work. You can have fast loops within fast loops. Uh, this is probably the next stage you should learn. Um, but for now, stick with the basics, generate a few fast loops, see what they do, see how they work, see how they, uh, they act in Fusion. Um, I would highly recommend grouping them for no other reason by just keeping your events uh, really tidy. You can just activate the group which has the fast loop um, routine in and then close the group when it's done um, and again this is not for optimizational reasons at all it used to be earlier in multimedia fusion 2 but it's not for that at all it's just purely for keeping um, your events tidy but uh, hopefully that tutorial was useful for you and you can uh, maybe pick up on what fast loops are now and how you can use them and how you can um, generate random amount of loops or a specific amount and uh, what you can actually do with them in fusion 2.5